Welcome everyone to another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today we have a brand new set of fusion heroes for Tatura Rheimhide. So they just released all the brand new heroes for Tatura's fusion. Let's go check them out. So we actually have some pretty good heroes in this little group. There's not as many, I don't think, as the last fusion for Sigmund High Shield. We had Thylesia, we had Durr, we had Demitha, who all made sense about maybe you want to keep them instead of fusing them. So you know, this time around, I don't think we have as many to debate about. But we still have a couple nice champions. Let's go over them. And I don't think you're ever going to see me start a video going, you know what? We have an amazing new rare champion, but I think we might have a brand new bomb meta champion in the game. And his name is Ordinator. He's a rare force attack dark elf champion, and he's bomb meta. And I think he's an introductory champion as far as the AoE bombs go. Kind of give some bomb characters over here to the rare rarity. Um, I don't believe any exist with the AoE currently in the game. Um, so it's like an introductory character, like I'm saying. But this passive skill, Enforcer, could be game-changing. Let's go over his uh, skill set here real quick. Weighty Punishment in the A1. Attacks one enemy. Has a 25% chance of placing a Freeze debuff for one turn. Okay, nothing real special there. And we don't know the actual modifiers for these yet. So Obedience Callers. Attacks all enemies. Has a 50% chance of placing a Bomb debuff that detonates after two turns. Four turn cooldown. Return when booked. It has an 80% chance of landing the bomb, so not 100% chance, 80. But this passive enforcer is what's really special. When attacked, has a 30% chance of decreasing all bomb debuff detonation countdowns on the attacker by one turn. I mean, this basically means that the attacker could explode by attacking. So it's not quite the same as a reflect damage type deal, but it's basically like, hit me and you'll blow up. And it's, you know... Angar is one of those characters you don't want to hit in the game. You hit Angar, he's going to come back, he's going to hit you, he's going to kill you. You don't want to hit him. This guy could be terrifying to hit. Put him on a whole team full of bomb champions, and then put him into a provoke set, for example, right? Use the A2, land the provoke, have him get attacked, and next thing you know, the guys are blowing up. You got Soul Drinker, you got War Mother, you got all these different AoE bomb champions. Let him throw the bombs on him, everybody. Let this guy drop the provoke on him and then let it go to town. Bombs galore. Everybody's blowing up, blowing themselves up. That could be crazy. This guy could be a new meta. I'm going to be trying this guy out. I'm going to take him at least to 50. And if he's really, really good, maybe we take him to 60 and we try out Enforcer like in the arena or something like that. I don't know. Could be cool. Okay, next character, we got Misericord. Rare magic affinity attack champion from the Banner Lords. A pity slaying, attacks one enemy, each hit is a 15% chance of placing a decreased speed debuff for two turns. Stay vigilant, attacks all enemies, fills his champion's turn meter by 5% for each living enemy. Basically, if you don't kill somebody, with four enemies on the screen, you get 20% turn meter. With five enemies, you're going to get 25% turn meter. So it's like a you know quarter to a fifth of a boost just by not killing people. I'd rather kill people, to be honest. You know, I don't really want the boost, so... Let's go. Bitter Tears places a counterattack buff and a 25% increased attack buff in this champion for two turns. I don't see anything special here. Let's move on to the next one. Castigator looks amazing over here. Really cool mask. A rare Magic Affinity HP Champion. I love HP Champions. One of the best in the game. Sacred Order Faction. Castigate. Attacks one enemy. Has a 25% chance of placing a Provoke debuff for one turn. Holy Equity. Heals with the ally with the lowest HP by 20% of his champion's max HP then equalizes the HP levels of all allies and grants his champion an extra turn. So there's an HP equalizer. And then Rebuff. Passive. Receives 15% less damage from enemies under Provoke debuffs. Nothing special here either. Probably wouldn't, you know, level them up. Uh, then we have Itinerant. A rare Force Affinity Attack Champion from the Shadowkin Faction. This guy is here to help you out with the Faction Wars that are being released here soon. If you have Soul Tap. Attacks one enemy. Leech. Chance increases to 50% if this attack is critical. Okay, so we got things that are based off if attacks are critical, get more boost. Okay, so Wanderer's Weirding attacks all enemies, has a 50% chance of placing a 15% decreased speed debuff, as the low one, and also increases 15% increased speed buff on this champion for two turns. It's again, if the attack is critical. Waste Away, A3, attacks one enemy, decreases the enemy's max HP by 30% of the damage inflicted if this attack is critical. I don't really see nothing special here either. He's got a leech, he's got decreased speed. Um, Max HP here. I mean, if you're, you know, needing something for the low levels of the faction wars, you know, take this guy to 30, try him out. I don't see nothing special here, though. Let's move on. We have our very first epic. Okay, Broodlord. Epic, Rarity, Force Affinity, Defense, Lizardman. Okay, 
Patient Tactician. Attacks one enemy two times. Each hit is a 30% chance of placing a Provoke debuff for one turn if the target is under a decreased speed debuff. Okay, so this comes with a condition. Conditional heroes. Let's th think of it this way. Okay, look it. He's got one, two, three, four, okay, and an aura. Okay, he's got three skills and a passive. All right. Anytime I see a hero that has some kind of condition associated with it, you have to think to yourself, what is the synergy involving this condition? And also, if it's conditional, you have to see it as a negative, right? Like that's a negative drawback to the actual kit and ability, but it's supposed to come with some sort of counter, right? Like if we have a drawback in one area, we have a more powerful ability or addition to another area, right? That's the way it should always work. Anytime a hero has some kind of a negative effect to them, it should be boosted or powering up some other effect to their kit. So we should never see these negative synergies like that as a negative. We should see them as like, where's the positive lie in this kit somewhere? Okay, so let's go over Defend the Nest. Places a 50% ally protection buff on the ally for two turns, then a block debuffs buff on the ally for one turn. Also places a shield buff on this champion for two turns, equal to 20% of this champion's max HP. Cooldown is three when booked. Okay, Primal Tear attacks all enemies, has a 40% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn. The chance increases to 75% against enemies under decreased speed debuffs. And see, that's where we're getting the additional increase here. So yeah, it has a little drawback, 40%, 50% when booked, but you're getting 85% when it's got a decreased speed debuff, and it doesn't need to have that, you know, it could just be without it. Egg Watcher, passive. Whenever this champion is attacked, or whenever allies under ally protection buffs are attacked, has a 30% chance of placing a 30% decreased speed debuff in the attacker for two turns. So here's where the synergy comes into play within his own kit. We see it all come around. Now, you could put a, a decreased speed debuff champion with him, and that'll help out the case, you know, tremendously. But let's go over the kit real quick, analyze this, because this is a little confusing, okay? So what we want to do is we want to defend the nest first, Okay, we're going to place a ally protection buff on an ally for two turns, then a block debuffs buff on an ally for one turn. Since it's epic, you don't get a two turn block debuff, you get a one. Okay, it makes sense. You get a shield, okay, all that good stuff. So this guy is meant to support one, like, weak character, like your damage dealer, whoever, you know, it could be like a, a, basically a spider tank, you know, like a cold heart, for example. Okay, so you drop the ally protection on cold heart, cold heart's going to take the hits. Whenever this champion is attacked, or whenever an ally is under ally protection buffs are attacked, has a 30% chance of placing a 30% decreased speed debuff on the attacker for two turns. Okay, so that's weak. You know, one third of a chance when you book it or um, mastery it to 35% here. So, it's, and actually we got 15 extra over here. So 45, 50% chance. Okay, so that's half. Okay, 50% chance when you put the mastery on it. So it's a one out of two chance. Okay, uh, you could definitely pair him with a decreased speed debuff champion as well. And this would be landing all the time. Okay, so attack one enemy two times. Each hit has a 30% chance of placing a provoke debuff for one turn if the target is under a decreased speed debuff. So he can provoke anybody he attacks as long as they're decreased speed. And as long as he, okay, so he's going to put the ally protection on your cold heart, damage away from your damage dealer, and get it onto your tank, I suppose. Um, but we'd have to find some situations where this is actually useful. Now, I would say overall, let's grade this champion and see if it's something we want to level up. I'm not so sure I'd want to level up this champion. Count to the game, you're a brand new player. Uh, would you want to level up this character to get your faction wars up to 21? Um, I'm not so sure because the Lizardmen have a great amount of defensive champions within the actual faction itself. You're going to be able to fuse Rosin Scarhide, for example, very quickly in the game. And he's going to be a huge, tremendous help to your faction wars. You also have um, Jareg, who's a pretty good champion. He does some similar things here. He has ally protection and stuff like that. So they actually have a couple tanks in the faction itself, but they don't really have like a control tank like Broodlord is and he's a really weird way of going about it like he's not like a Angar or a Prundar or someone who just provokes the guys and has them hit him he's like a weird way to go around to get provoke so I guess they were trying to be really creative here but it falls a little bit flat now I guess if you really needed uh to protect a champion like a cold heart or something this guy probably makes sense to level up to at least 50 and he'll carry you through some part of the game but he seems to be like an early level mid-level account uh character let's go on to the next one Next up, we have Visionary, Epic, Spirit, Affinity, Support, Dark Elf, Champion. Ectoplasm attacks one enemy, has a 30% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 15%. This chance increases to 100% if the target is under a decreased crit rate or decreased crit damage debuff. 
Hunt attacks all enemies, has a 75% chance of placing a 30% decrease crit rate debuff and a 25% decrease crit damage debuff on all enemies for two turns. Three turn cooldown when booked, 100% chance when booked. And then Dark Dealings places a 30% chance increase crit rate buff and a 30% increase crit damage buff on all allies for two turns. Also fills the turn meters of all allies by 15%. Four turn cooldown, three turns when booked. The aura is increases ally speed in dungeons by 24%. Well, she's a speed lead for dungeons is what it looks like. And if you think about this for one second, all content is PvE, standard-based PvE content, has a 15% crit rate on it. So if you drop haunt on enemies that aren't specified to have it more than a 15% crit rate, like a boss, for example, then this will completely nullify crits against your team in PvE content. So she is a dungeon content speed lead for PvE, okay? So you drop the decreased crit rate, and you're going to guarantee you don't get crit. Okay, so you pair this with a strengthen buff, you pair this with an increased defense buff, you pair this with decrease attack debuff, stuff like that. And you're going to make sure that enemies in PvE content are just weak. They're hitting you like a wet noodle. So this one I'm pretty excited about. You want to level her up for basically a speed lead for dungeons, PvE content, not PvP. You already got enough people to do that already. So, I mean, I guess they're trying to give you somebody unique who does something similar, but does it in a different area of the game. I like this hero. I like this hero. I, th I might think of, I might book her up. We'll see. Next hero, Masamoto. Epic, Spirit, Affinity, Defense, Shadowkin. So this guy looks really, really cool. But I'm going to tell you right now, after looking at his kit, Otatsu does the same exact thing. Almost to a T. And maybe even better. We have to compare the multipliers. So dual slice A1, attacks one enemy two times, has a 10% chance of stealing one random buff. The other person who has a kit like this is Kaioku. So if you have a Kaioku or you have a Hotatsu, you might want to consider not needing Masamoto at all. Uh, if you don't have one of those characters, then you might need somebody who does what he does for the Shadowkin Crypt. So take a look at your options, see who you have in your account. Uh, A2, Stealth Typhoon, attacks all enemies, has a 50% chance of placing a 50% decrease attack debuff for two turns. And then Yojimbo places a 60% increased defense buff on all allies for two turns. Also fills the turn meters of all allies by 15%. Now four turn cooldown when booked. So again, same sk skill set basically as Hotatsu and Kaioku from the same faction, except for the stealing one random buff part. Okay, so going up to the next one, Umitogi. So another Shadowkin. We have Epic Magic Affinity Attack Shadowkin. Attack basis one this time. We have the Veil and Perfect Veil coming into play. Finally, some more heroes with that. So we have Psy Assassin, attacks one enemy two times, has an additional 20% chance of inflicting a critical hit if this champion is under a Veil or Perfect Veil buff. And we have Silent Parting A2, attacks one enemy two times. Each hit will ignore 20% of the target's defense, has an additional 20% chance of inflicting a critical hit if this champion is under a Veil or Perfect Veil buff. Then Fade Into Nothing A3 places a Perfect Veil buff and a 30% increased speed buff on this champion for two turns, and fills this champion's turn meter by 40%. On a three turn cooldown when booked. So you get the perfect veil, you get the increased speed, and you go into, hopefully, you get another turn. You, know, you go into steel parting A2, um, attacks, ignore a little bit of defense, and then um, you got the veil on, you're doing a little bit better here. And then uh, same thing with the A1. Standoff passive whenever this champion is attacked, completely blocks one hit, decreasing the incoming damage to zero, then counterattacks at the default skill. When attacked by a boss, decreases the incoming damage by 50% instead before counterattacking. It's on a two-turn cooldown when booked. You definitely want to book that. You're definitely going to want to book that right there. But basically immune to damage um, when it's just a single hit. When it comes to two hits, you're blocking the first hit, and then you're counterattacking before the second hit even comes through. So I'm kind of wondering if the second hit hits, like if it still lands... Or do they have to live through the attack first before it lands? I don't know. But it sounds really cool here. So Aura is increases ally crit rate in all battles by 15%. Pretty cool champion here. I mean, this passive standoff sounds amazing. It sounds like PvP uh, arena material where you're just kind of going back and forth, going off on somebody. Uh, Angar is going to destroy you still, though, Umitogi. Let me tell you, you're not going to be able to mess with Angar. So very cool champion here. Probably one of the best of the, the bunch. Got Masamoto is kind of a copy, but looks really, really cool. Uh, that's the other thing about these characters. Raid Shadow Legend does an amazing job on the art. Visionary, probably my favorite one of the bunch. Rude Lord here. I don't know about him. 
All right, let's move on to the legendaries. There's two legendaries, and then we have the fusion champion, Katara Rheimheit. I want to talk about him in a separate video. Let's go over Chagger here. Okay, legendary void affinity. That's important, right? Attack based lizardman. So we, this guy has an amazing kit, let me tell you. It looks crazy already. Super. Attacks one enemy, has a 50% chance of placing a sleep debuff for one turn. Kind of reminds me of Siffy. Uh, Venom Storm attacks all enemies two times. The first hit has a 75% chance of placing a 5% poison debuff for four turns. That's kind of important there, four turns. I don't know many abilities in the game that have a four turn poison on it. Okay, the second hit has a 75% chance of placing a 60% decrease defense debuff for three turns. So you get the poison on the A2 and a decrease defense. Okay, 100% chance when booked. Three turn cooldown, attacks all enemies two times, not once. The Heart Stopper A3 attacks one enemy, then attacks one time at random. If the target is under a poison debuff, will ignore shield, block damage, and unkillable buffs. Grants an extra turn if this attack kills an enemy. Also resets the cooldown of the Venom Storm skill if this attack kills two enemies. Four turn cooldown. Get increased damage, no decrease cooldown. Okay. Now the passive here, Constant Agony. This sounds insane. Absolutely insane. Constant Agony. I mean, like he really wants you to be in Agony nonstop. Instantly attacks enemies with a default skill whenever they receive damage from poison debuffs placed by this champion. Wow. Wow. When hitting enemies under poison debuffs, heals this champion by 10% of the damage inflicted. The aura is increases ally attack in all battles by 33%. Amazing aura there. Let's go talk about this kit for one second. Okay, so he has the single target attack one time on the A1. But this is a counterattack, kind of. Or preemptive post-attack. I don't know how you want to call that. Basically, it's an extra attack from the A2. So you land the A2 on everybody, and every single time they take the poison tick, if they don't strip the buff, debuff I mean, you're going to start attacking with the A1. That sounds crazy. Now, if they happen to be, you know, not hit after you land the sleep, they're going to stay asleep for their whole turn. So that poison tick uh, ticks again, and he's going to come attack them again, probably land the sleep debuff again. I mean, that sounds insane to me. That sounds insane. And then the, the A3 here, Heartstopper, sounds like it's going to be a very hard hitter. Like, he's going to hit you. He'll probably kill you. Get the extra turn. Who knows if he kills a random enemy? I mean, on top of that. But, I mean, just wow. You could land the poison from someone else first, right? Get someone else in your team like Calvalax to land it before the fight even starts. <laughs> then ignore the shield, block damage, and unkillable buff. Pop somebody with your A3. Get the extra turn, pop them with the A2, let them take their turn, and start popping them with the A1. Like, what the f***? That kit is crazy. I want this guy already. Chogger sounds like an amazing champion. So Christmas, Fusion, this guy's going to be available at some point in the game. I don't know when he's coming out. Maybe it was like the 18th or something, three days. Wow, this guy's going to be crazy. If you guys pull this guy during the Avoid Summoning, let me know how he is in the comments section below. Wow, this guy is crazy. Okay, we're going to skip Tatsura Rheimheide real quick and go straight on to Lysia Soul Guide. Legendary Force Affinity Defense Sacred Order Champion. Kind of looks like a, I don't know, a Dark Elf or something to me. I don't know. It looks a little bit like Ray. I don't know. Different color skin. Like Sacred Order, though. Definitely angelic looking for sure. Um, this kind of looks like some kind of weird synergy with the Pixneal. So I was looking forward to her kit because the graphics on them look crazy. Uh, Timeless, for example, look nuts. Uh, Breath of Rhyme look nuts. Everwinter look nuts. Glittering Slash look nuts. I was waiting to check out her kit. Let's go over it. Okay, Glittering Slash attacks one enemy, has a 30% chance of placing a freeze debuff for one turn, also applies a debuff spread effect, taking one random debuff from the target and placing it on all enemies under freeze debuffs. Okay, okay. Breath of Rhyme attacks all enemies, places a 25% weakened debuff for two turns, also steals one random buff from each enemy under a freeze debuff. Okay, then Everwinter places a block debuff on all allies for two turns, two turns instead of one. Also has a 60% chance of placing a freeze debuff on all allies or all enemies for one turn. Fills his champion's turn meter by 15% for each freeze debuff placed by this skill. You're going to be able to get, you know, what, 60% turn meter back? You place the buff on your allies, also place the freeze, potentially, and then get some turn meter back. So you're going to be able to get your turn back pretty fast. You probably want to use the A3, then go to the A2. Okay. Timeless passive. Let's check this out. This champion's skills cannot be put on cooldown. Hello, Warlord. <laughs> Hello Arena, hard counter, right? 
Okay, so we got a hard counter to a warlord in the arena. Whenever an enemy tries to put either this champion's skills or an ally's skills on cooldown, places a freeze debuff in that enemy, hello warlord, also has a 50% chance of denying the cooldown increase effect. So she could deny a warlord on herself and on allies, that's crazy. The freeze debuff cannot be blocked or resisted, will not deny cooldown increasing effects from bosses. It doesn't work on bosses, but the freeze debuff can not be resisted. This is going to be amazing for arenas. The warlord tries to come into the team, or the game, Glacia is on the team, Boom, counters Warlord. You got a nice counter. Warlord can actually end fights. So he's amazing in the arena. She seems like she could be an amazing hard counter. So somebody to look forward to pulling. So Aura increases all ally resist in all battles by 60. She could be kind of cool. So Glycia, defensive base champion, kind of a counter for Warlord. Chogger, just an amazing DPS. Looks like he's going to annihilate people in the arena. You got Umitogi, Masamato, Moto, Visionary, Broodlord. Itinerant, Castigator, Misericord, and one of my favorites right here out of the whole bunch, Ordinator. This guy could be special. I'm going to like put this guy through the test, put him through the paces, try him out. We'll get back to you guys in a new video when they release these guys. So I hope you guys are having a great day. hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys do, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.